Your Creative Push, episode 126. I try to show people the changes that just one year of dedication can do if you really put yourself to it. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Zach Dunn. Zach is an oil painter from Reading, Pennsylvania, who specializes in dark art. And not just any dark art, but the kind of dark art that will make you remember all the long, forgotten, repressed nightmares from your childhood. And Zach, I have to say that, you know, your your art is like totally terrifying, but it's also like very beautiful too, to be honest. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's funny because my, uh, my company is called A Beautiful Nightmare. So it kind of works. <laughs> well, it's perfect. It's perfect words for it. How did you get started with, you know, doing dark art specifically? Well, I was in the military at the time. And uh, after I came back from Afghanistan, I was I had some issues. So I was looking into other ways to cope than medication. So um, I, know, I went to this tattoo parlor called uh, Blue Hanya. It was owned by a guy named Lucky and... Uh, he did a lot of painting and kind of pushed me into it, I guess. And I don't know. I just picked it up and started going from there about four years ago. And uh, what turned into, you know, coping with my problems, and I became a career. Now, would you say that it's, like, completely, I don't want to say cured, because I don't know if there's, like, like a cure uh, necessarily, but do you... Is it? Do you still use it as that, or like a coping mechanism, or is it just kind of just part of your life now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with time, everything got a little better, but you know, I still deal with stuff every now and then. Stuff I can't help. Mm-hmm. You know, even that stuff, like just regular day to day stress, always kind of painting always helps. So uh, I kind of get lost in it and forget the world around me. I think that's like the the coolest part about art and creativity. It's like uh, an internal way that <laughs> I think everybody has in them, like a, a way to just kind of get back to yourself, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah. Um, but it's like a way to just get back and, and kind of, like you said, cope with the day-to-day life, um, the things that happen in life and just kind of, I don't know, reset in a way. Yeah, exactly. Now, was there... You know, a lot of people listening now might have like ideas that are out there and they might be afraid to do them because of, you know, what other people might think or what what they think it will say about themselves. Have you ever had like dealt with that where, you know, you're creating these like awesomely terrifying things, but do you ever wonder about what people think? Not really. Uh, I do it for me and, you know, for the people that support me, you know. It's it's not for everybody, and I understand that, and I deal with criticism from regular people that just aren't into it, and some people are just (laughs) not so nice people. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. (laughs) Then I got the religious nuts that you know are very judgmental, and uh, you know, but I I don't know. It just doesn't bother me. I don't let it. I don't start fights with people on there. If somebody says something. You know, 99% of the time, my fans will just attack that person and get rid of them. So I don't got to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to ha- to have it. Just like a horde of a horde of zombies that can <laughs> take take them out for you. Oh, it's awesome. I love my fans <laughs> and the support they give me. You know, I owe everything to them. So a lot of them, you know, try to contact me and message me. And, you know, I try to message back and talk to as many as I can. I, lo- I just love your attitude of, you know, screw them. Would you have any advice for people that that don't have that same type of uh, kind of bravery that you have that might be afraid like they're they're like totally into like what you do and they they want to do something similar they want to just express themselves in the darkest way possible or, or whatever it may be um do you have any advice for them Well I mean if you have no supporters you know you got to have some people in your life a lot of people who who kind of fall back from what they want to do because they don't have the right people in their life that do support what they what they want. And uh, I don't know, you either got to do it for yourself and just, you know, say F them to the people that really kind of put you down. Because all in all, it's what you want to do. It's not what they want to do. It's it's your life. It's your goal. It's your dream. You know, whatever. You can't let people influence that because 
they don't own you. You're your own person. You do what you want to do and make yourself happy in the short amount of time you've got to live. Kind of said it better myself. Speaking of time, I read, I saw your one post where you essentially, I guess, touched up something that you had done a year before. And you talked a little bit about your mentality when it comes to, you know, improving and also uh, after one year of something not selling. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's really uh, interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, naturally, the more you do something, the better you get. And I have a lot of old pieces that, you know, if they don't sell and I haven't varnished them or, or sealed them in any way, then I'll I'll repaint over them. I'm actually working on one right now, one of my first pieces, and I'm redoing it. I didn't take a picture of it, unfortunately, so hopefully I can find a, a picture of what it was before. But just to show people the progression you have when uh, you really put your mind to something. And I mean, I, I paint every day. You know, I paint at least four to 12 hours a day. I don't know. You just have to, you have to want to get better and you have to criticize yourself and, you know, it's your art. So you're going to be more hard on yourself than anybody else will, but that'll also make you better as long as you don't, you know, sit and pout about it. (laughs) But yeah, I try to show people the changes that just one year of dedication can do if you really put yourself to it. Does it ever surprise you? Um, yeah, it does because, you know, a year ago I thought I was I was doing very well and you know, not that I have a huge ego, but <laughs> you know, I always thought I was a decent painter for the short amount of time I've been painting. But <laughs> just comparing my stuff from then to now, I'm just like, wow, I was not as good as I thought I was. Right. But uh, you know, it's just that's that's just how it is. It looks good for you at the time. And then later on, you're like, you just realize you are getting better. And whether or not you believe it as you're doing it, you really have to put those comparisons together so you can see the changes, you know, just like somebody does when they want to lose weight, they take a before and after picture because you're not going to see that change because you're, you're constantly doing it every day. You have to look back into the past and then look at your present standing. For sure. I think it's a really important exercise for people to do too. And the, the way you do it is, is actually drawing and painting over your previous work. Does it ever feel like killing a baby to you? Like, or not killing a baby, but killing like one of your babies, you know? Yeah, no, not at all. I, um, I just, I'd look at it as more, you know, a, a growth kind of thing. Mm. Still, the original piece is still under there. I mean, when people buy the painting that, you know, I've done two or three times over, they're buying three different paintings in one. So it's just something to show the building process, I guess. Yeah, like version 2.0. <laughs> Are there some things that initially held you back from being creative? And do you still experience any of those kinds of, you know, resistances on a day-to-day basis? Um, man, besides video games, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge gaming nerd. So luckily, my painting is, is my full-time gig so i can you know stop and game it up if i want or go to the gym or go outside and do whatever i want but you know painting's definitely number one in my life because that's what i live off of but no i still find time to do other things and they don't really hinder on my creative flows very cool so before you started doing this uh, after you got back uh, from An- afghanistan were you drawing before then uh, I dabbled every now and then. I wasn't like hardcore into it, but uh, yeah, I, I drew as a kid, doodled every now and then with my buddy, and uh, but that was about it. I never dreamed I'd I'd do anything with that, especially you know just jumping into painting the way I did. It was just very random, but yeah, I don't know. I just uh, never was very artistic like I am now. Hmm. Well, I think that's really inspirational for people, too, is just that, you know, it's not like you had to have done it like as a child prodigy. You know, you didn't have to do it early on. You can get started really at any time and it doesn't necessarily have to become a career, but um, you shouldn't be afraid to, to start something new as an adult, you know? All right. Do you have like a, a worst moment or a hardest time specifically having to do with your, your career as an artist? Yeah, I don't I don't think I've really had anything that I would consider very bad the cool thing about 
the art world is people who come to you for something or are interested in what you do, they're never really dicks about it. <laughs> they're, you know, they're super supportive and very, very patient. Like, you know, when people order anything from me, it, you know, sometimes takes three weeks to get to them, but they they don't complain. They don't, nothing. They're, they're very patient. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I've never had anybody really get in my face about anything that was a fan or a supporter. Right. Well, that's, that's one of the cool things about the art world. I think that, and, and one of the reasons that this podcast is, is successful is that, you know, everybody just seems to want to help, you know, like the guests and, and the listeners, it's everyone's trying to, you know, work on this thing together, you know, no matter what it is, everybody has these, these things that hold them back. And it's just kind of a matter of just supporting each other and, and getting through it. So I love that. Absolutely. Um, aside from playing video games and you do, um, art as a full-time thing, but do you have like a formula for balancing your time? Not really, man. It's just, you know, whatever I feel like doing when I wake up, I usually get up at like seven or eight. I'll jump on fallout or some of my other favorites. <laughs> uh, and then I'll start painting or I'll, you know, if I have orders that need to go, then I'll go to the post office or my shipping company and send stuff out. Or I'll just go, you know, for a hike or kayak and just random, just however I feel. Just doing whatever you feel like doing. That's the best way to do it, man. Um, so what would you say then as a full-time artist? What would you say that art and creativity brings to your life? It's just, <laughs> I don't know, to be able to who, to uh, to create anything is cool to me. I mean, something that came from you, something that came from inside you. Uh, and people actually really like and enjoy it is just, it's very, it's very awesome. Like, like a lot of artists will say that, you know, paintings are like their kids because yeah, it, you, you created it. It's, it is a part of you. I don't know. It's a really good feeling. I, I love it. Every time I, I complete a piece, it's like, uh, you know, winning the lottery. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it. Yeah, it really is to be able to put something out, like you said, from, from inside of you and out into the world and have this like tangible thing that you can look at and then, you know, look at it for a year and then perhaps, <laughs> uh, add more to it. Um, like we were talking about before, but yeah, it's, it's, it's having that thing out in the world. It's, it's pretty much the, the meaning of existence, I think. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and, you know, you never know who's going to see it and who's going to compliment on it and, you know, who just gets curious about it. Like I did a piece called Valak from the movie, The Conjuring. I don't know if you... mm -hmm. And the director, James Wan actually got in touch with me to, say how much he loved the piece and i thought that was really really cool uh, it's just crazy like the people that you wouldn't expect to take the time out of their busy day because anybody that's a director is a very busy person but to actually say you know they really like the piece and to message me and it's just a really that's a really awesome feeling the people that you look up to and the people that you enjoy actually talking to you and telling you how much they appreciate your work is really fulfilling yeah, that's an amazing story, dude. And yeah, you're right. It's it's probably the best feeling to have people reach out to you. But the, the other thing is like you don't even know who is appreciating your work and who's not going to reach out to you that, you know, it changed their life. Perhaps it it gave them inspiration to do the thing that they wanted to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's the coolest thing. So well, speaking of inspirations, do you have a uh, greatest inspiration? Oh, man, I've got a lot. Uh, Good. <laughs> there's... Chris Mars, there's uh, Mark Ryden, Michael Hussar, uh, Chet Czar, Chet Likeness. My buddy Dan Kobasic was a great inspiration. Uh, since I wasn't an artist my entire life, I never really delved deep into like the old masters and everything like that. Um, so I can't go and say, you know, I really like this person, but because I, I don't really know anything about those people. I, I learned art through my generation and a couple generations before me. That, that's about it. So um, with this style of work, there, it wasn't really seen back then. It's more 50s on up. Today's artists are my inspirations. Yeah, well, you don't you don't really need to go back into the masters if that's not what you're into. You know, I think that's good advice for, for people is just do, you know, surround yourself with the things that, that interest you and then do the thing that interests you. It's like, you don't have to go down the traditional path, you know? Yeah. 
exactly. Uh, what are the plans for your future? Honestly, man, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really plan too far ahead because I don't like to live my life on a schedule. Obviously I don't like to set goals that I'm not hundred percent sure on. I mean, I'd like to end up, you know, on a beach somewhere <laughs> living the dream, but, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, we'll see. Maybe California one day, maybe not. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to not have a plan though. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any advice for somebody who is, you know, at a later, not a later point in their life, but you know, they're out of college or they're out of whatever, doing their own job. They've gone down a, a certain path or perhaps they're in the military as well. Do you have any advice for them to pivot and to, um, really start pursuing their creative passions? I mean, if you, if you're into it that much, just do it. Don't let, you know, the stress of everyday life kind of put you down to stop you in your tracks of falling in your dream. Uh, with whatever you want to do, music, art, anything. I mean, it's all the same genre anyway. But, uh, yeah, always make time, set aside time, whether, you, you know, everyone has a day off. You know, we're not in some kind of weird country where you work seven days a week, unless you are one of those people. But you <laughs> got to make time to sit down and, and practice. And it's all about dedication with anything. And don't let your regular nine to five job get in the way. And if you're motivated enough, you'll, you'll get to be where you want to be in no time. Absolutely. Do you have a, a favorite book or YouTube clip or anything else that you draw inspiration from and that maybe we could too? I don't know. I, I, I get a lot of my inspiration from you know, whether I dream about something or most of the time I just start painting and whatever kind of happens, happens. If I watch like a horror movie or something like that might motivate me to start painting, um, but yeah, uh, it's mainly movie. I'm a huge movie buff, so I usually watch movies while I paint. And uh, yeah, it's just that's that's motivation enough for me. <laughs> Do you ever paint like <laughs> something crazy, like I don't know, like unicorns or rainbows or anything like that? <laughs> Do you ever switch it up? I'll switch it up. Like if somebody asks me to paint them something, I commission mm -hmm. them something. I'll do whatever they want. Uh, I prefer to do my style of work, but you know, um, I do, I think I do decent work in wildlife. I mean, I haven't done too many. I do a lot of owls. Uh, I did a, a bald eagle once. Uh, I'm working on a grizzly bear right now. You know, that stuff's fun to me too. But when you get into like actual people and stuff like that, I don't, I can't help myself but make them look decrepit <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's fair enough man i mean you know like like you said that's it's your thing and uh, i think it's good advice for anybody that you know you you have to put your own spin on it you have to put a piece of yourself into it whatever that is um or else it's you know you're not really being yourself yeah exactly uh zach this has been really fun but it is time for the final push and this is where i ask you to kind of reach to the microphone and just grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you just already really inspired today and use your best words of advice and push them into pursuing their creative passions i mean the best thing i can say is um you know don't let people get in the way <laughs> that's what a lot of people do um a lot of people are so bored with their own lives that they want to interfere with someone who's actually doing something with theirs and uh if you let them in, you're going to either slow yourself down or give up altogether. So you have to be in it 100% and really say F off to those dickheads. Uh, <laughs> just stay motivated, stay positive, and don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up and, yeah, ignore everyone yeah. <laughs> except for yourself. Yeah, that's, that's the best advice I can give you. My man. Thank you, Zach, man, for coming on the show and for giving us that push, man. Absolutely. Uh, and you can find Zach on his Instagram account. That's Zach Dunn 89, Z A C K D U N N 89. Uh, or you can head to yourcreativepush.com slash Zach Dunn to find all the links to everything we talked about today. Zach, thanks again, brother. Absolutely, man. Dude, thank you so much, Zach, for coming on the show. I think it's just one of the most valuable lessons that you can do that you can learn is just to put the blinders on and just paint 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 or or sing 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 or write 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 and then just a year later look back and see the progress that you made 
even if you don't want to literally paint over the work <laughs> like Zach does, which I totally understand if you want to paint over your, you know, previous uh, works, you know, try to find a way to to look back and to make the comparisons. And there's a lot of you on Instagram that I see doing this, and it's it's one of my favorite things to see these like side by side comparisons. You know, these before and after drawings, whether it's you know one year, ten years, whatever it may be, of you know the same drawing or of similar drawings. And one of my favorite sayings is you know compare and despair because I think that it's really bad to compare yourself to other people. But I think you need to compare yourself to to yourself. I don't I don't know what the grammatically correct. You need to compare you to yourself. I don't know. I don't know how to say that. But the the point is that you need to do this so that you can see exactly what is going on within you and uh, within your creative pursuit. And we talk like a lot on the podcast about how the first month or so of establishing this, you know, creative habit can sometimes be the hardest because it's forming a new habit. And as you're forcing yourself to start out, it can be super obvious, you know, how many changes are occurring in your life, you know, all for the better, hopefully, but also in your art, in your creative thing that you're doing. And even in these first days, you might be able to see the the progress from, from day to day. Because you're you're a smart and you're a talented person who is either shaking off the cobwebs of a of a creative habit that you've put down, um, you know, a long time ago, or you're starting out. You know, you're learning new skills. Either way, you might be able to see the progress from day to day. And w- when this habit starts to stick after a month or so, and it becomes a part of your life, it becomes a part of you. You know, it's 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 not a hard thing for you to put in the time every day and to put in the effort. And I'm not saying it's an easy thing um, to continue to carve out that time and effort in your daily life. Uh, I'm just saying that you're you're used to it and you might not be able to see the day-to-day progress anymore. But it's so important to look back and see the you of a year ago and be like, oh shit, who, who is that guy? Who is that girl? I don't know of anything more motivating than that. And I love how Zach does it. Um, not just for that affirmation to inspire him himself and to inspire, you know, the people that follow him, but also to revitalize an older piece and to bring new life to it. Um, <laughs> or, or death in his case, (laughs) and and perhaps get it moving into a sale um, and into its future home, you know, where it's going to give people nightmares for years to come. (laughs) So yeah, that's all I've got for you today. Go back and look at your old stuff if you're already on the journey, and if you're not yet, you know, just feel good that you have created or you're starting to create your before pictures that you can compare to after in a year or whatever it is that you want to look back upon and just see the the incredible progress that you're going to make. And the whole point of this is to enjoy that entire process of, of, of making it, you know? Just like to once again say thank you to Zach for coming on the show. And I want to thank you for listening and for letting us help to inspire you to get your work done. So please go and get it done. Do that thing that's on your mind. And we will be here for you on Wednesday if you need the push again. Whenever there's episodes that say curse words, I like to add a bunch of extra curse words at the end. So go and get your shit done. Go and do it, (laughs) and we'll be here for you next time, okay? So just get this shit done, and we'll see you then. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.